Hi, I'm Layla Ehlers, Program Manager at Girl Scouts of Western Ohio. Today my husband and resident mechanic is going to touch on all five steps of the Senior Girl Scout Car Care Badge. First, we'll talk about getting a handle on basic car maintenance. Then we'll investigate vehicle safety, talk about some safe driving practices, find out what to do in case of emergency, and then talk about driving for a greener world. So take it away, Rick. Okay, the first thing I want to go over with you guys is uh, checking your oil. Um, get your hood popped, and a lot of times you can find the dipstick will be labeled with engine oil on it. So you can pull it off. What I like to do is wipe it off first. And then stick it back down in there. Make sure it goes all the way down. Pull it back out. And normally there will be two dots on there. And then the one furthest up is the full mark. You don't want to go past that mark. But anywhere right below it should be good. Uh, it's important to have good clean oil and full oil in your car. A lot of the motors nowadays require it to be full in order for things to run efficiently. Um, if it's low, it can cause a check engine light. And then a lot of shops will charge you, you know, to get that looked at for something just as simple as the oil being low. So it's a good, good place to start. Um, another thing is, I know a lot of people are curious about their brakes, when they need to be changed. Uh, you can check the brake reservoir, which a lot of times will also be labeled. Um, it'll have normally a minimum and a max on the side of it. It might be kind of hard to see there, but you can check. And when that fluid gets low, it's a good indication that the brakes are also getting low. Um, that is not something you want to top off, but it's just a good idea to have it looked at every once in a while just to check so you know you don't have unexpected repairs coming up. Um, another good thing to check would be tire pressure. And you can look on the inside of the door jam on all vehicles and they'll have the pressure right on that sticker in there. And you wanna go by what the door says, not what the tires say on there. You wanna go by what the manufacturer recommends. And then you can pick up a little air gauge, normally for a couple bucks, any parts store normally have it. Just take it off, take the cap off, and then push it on there. And you can see it's reading about 35 pounds. Uh, it is good habit to check that about once a month, uh, depending on the weather, the temperature outside, it will fluctuate a lot. So it's a good, safe habit to check on that also. Um, some of the issues with tire pressures being too low or too high can be, uh, you know, or not having the correct, the correct pressure will be, uh, can cause handling issues and braking. If you were in an instance where you needed to, you know, make a move or something, that um, you want to make sure your tire pressure is correct. Where can you go to um, put air if you know if you can't do it at home? Where mm -hmm. do you go? Uh, a lot of shops actually will do it for free. I know you can come up to our shop, um, and they'll they'll check it for free. Some gas stations will have them too, but some of them do charge. So, you know, I'd say go to a shop. More than likely, they'll be more than happy to help you out. So. Great. Um, it's a good, good safety concern there. Um, some other vehicle safety I would look into would be you know, uh, your lights and your wipers. You know, you want to have good working headlights so you can see. And also turn signals and brake lights. Um, that way other people know where, you know, your next move is going to be. So it's a good thing to make sure all those are in working condition. How do you know when a light's out? Does something tell you or? Uh, some cars, some manufacturers will have a warning on the dash light telling you that it's out. Um, some, not so much. It's just sometimes you might have to take a second and check, 
you know, just turn your turn signals on, hit your brakes, maybe have somebody else looking at the lights to make sure that they're all working properly. I know when my turn signal has been out, it makes that super fast clicking sound. That's how I yeah, knew. That's, a, that's another <laughs> good indication that you normally have a turn signal out. Um, so that would be pretty much it on the lights. Um, and as far as researching safe driving practices, um, a lot of it is just driving habits. Um, you want to, you know, have a sure, clear distance between you and the car in front of you. Uh, kind of be aware of your surroundings. And another thing is make sure your mirrors are all good and set before you take off so you can see around you. Um, there is a blind spot on most cars that is uh, you can't see looking through the mirror. So a good thing is to turn around and, you know, actually look. Um, and a lot of times I'll even look twice just to be sure before I'm changing a lane or something like that. Uh, let's see, and also follow road signs. Oh yeah, speed limit. Speed limit. That's yeah, important. Those are good. <laughs> um, just just being aware, you know, of your surroundings and uh, what's coming up is a good good indication. So, what do we do in case of an emergency? Um, well, first, depending, I would uh, you like know, the check engine light came on. Came on while driving. Uh, you know, a lot of it is depending if you hear the car making noise or if it's running rough or you see the check engine light flashing, I would definitely get pulled over as soon as possible. Um, if it just comes on, you know, and it seems to be driving all right, it's probably not going to do any more, any damage. Um, just could be like a sensor or something going out. So more than likely you'll be fine. Continue driving with that, but I would definitely, you know, your next stop just kind of maybe have somebody try to look at it uh, or you can pull into a shop you know they're all over the place and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to scan it for you to tell you if, if it'd be safe to continue driving at the moment you know uh, so or if it's an actual emergency yeah yeah exactly what about if you have a flat tire when you're on the road um, you know just one of the things is be cautious, make sure you can get over um, safely and you can get over into a good shoulder where you're not going to cause any other accidents or anything else to yourself. Um, it's definitely, you know, you want to be safe, safe out there. So driving on a flat tire is not recommended, but if you need to get to, you know, a safe spot, it's, you know, if you're in a construction zone and there's no shoulder, right. yeah, if you can escape be, that easily. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not going to be worth it just trying to get a quick fix in. So, What about, so um, we're not going to show t changing the tire today, but I just wanted, um, I know some people talk about, oh, just throw the donut on, but we're learning more, like new cars, that's not yeah. always an option. A lot of them option. don't have them. Um, one thing you can do is check your owner's manual. Uh, there's all kinds of information in there, probably more than you need to know, but <laughs> it does have an index so you can kind of go in and check, uh, just look up, you know, if it has a spare. If it does, um, most of them will be in the back. Uh, and then a good thing to do is uh, when changing a tire is to break all these lug nuts loose first before you jack it up before you jack the car up, because um, a lot of times that wheel's just gonna spin if it's up in the air. So you wanna break all these lug nuts loose, then jack the car up. You just wanna turn it maybe one turn or so when you break it loose, uh, and then jack the car up, and then you should be able to get them off real easy. And proceed from there. So, our final step today is talking about driving for a greener world. So do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of that is some of the stuff we've actually gone over already. Um, the tire pressure is a big thing. Uh, checking the engine oil, you know, it's just everything's going to run more efficiently and smoother. Uh, you know, if your tires are low, there's going to be more rolling resistance. Um, 
And a lot of that too is also driving habits. Um, you know, braking sooner and not uh, doing hard accelerations. Uh, you can actually gain a couple miles per gallon just, you know, with your driving habits. Um, so that's, that's one great way to, you know, help out the environment and save you some money. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Is there anything you want to add or do we feel like you gave a, a thorough talk in about uh, basic car care? I think it's pretty good for basic, uh, basic information on a car. Um, you know, I know a lot of the people are kind of leery about some mechanics, but a lot of times if you go in there and talk to them, you know, they'll, they'll steer you in the right direction. So that's a, you know, another good thing if, Oh, uh, with owning a vehicle is, you know, is go in and talk, talk to the guy working on your car, you know, and then if you don't, you know, feel like he's doing a good job, then, you know, go to the next guy. There's, there's plenty of mechanics out there. So it's like uh, finding the right doctor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the doctor yep. for your car. Yep. All it's, right. It's a big investment. So taking care of it, you know, is definitely a good idea. Oh, and I'm going to admit that I'm sometimes bad about not uh, filling my gas. Tank, or letting it run a little too low on gas and tell them what you think of that Rick. Yeah, yeah it does put a strain on the uh, the the motor in the fuel pump running it low all the time. Um, sometimes what I like to do is just you know you don't always want to have to put that much money in your gas tank so I'll just act like the halfway mark is kind of the empty mark so every time it gets down and that way you know it's just another thing that's not going to be a costly repair in the future and uh, something that you you know you won't have to worry about. And saves you from breaking down on the highway if you get stuck in traffic and you were hoping to make that gas stretch <laughs> a little longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, thank you. Um, so I think I heard find yourself a resident mechanic, know how to at least check your oil. We know how to check our tires. We know some basic uh, safety habits. And make sure you look through your owner's manual. It gives you a lot of the information that we talked about mm -hmm. today. Um, oh, one last question we didn't talk about is how often do you change your oil? Uh, it just kind of depends on the car. Some cars call for a synthetic, and then some cars call for a conventional oil. Um, normally with a conventional, they say 3,000 miles. Uh, you can go a little longer. And then with the synthetic, they say 5,000. Um, and like I said, if you go over some, it's not that big of a deal. But it is something you just want to keep an eye on. Make sure there is plenty of oil in the car uh, so you don't have any of those, you know, unwanted check engine lights or other costly repairs that um, running it low can uh, cause. So. All right. And then um, before we head out, because we are practicing... Uh social distancing and quarantining and Rick still has to go to work every day to make sure those essential workers can get to work safely and their vehicles are working. Um, but for those of us that are not, make sure your car doesn't sit. He's warned me about that a little bit. So now might be a good time to go start up your car, right? Yeah, go get, go ahead and uh, start it up. Let it run for a little bit. Uh, you want those, uh, the oils and stuff to kind of go through and get everything lubricated and also, uh, It'll put a nice charge on your battery so you don't have to end up going back to work one day and come out and your car doesn't start. So, uh, yeah, it's a good, good habit. Excellent. All right, well, I, th I think we covered it all. So if you have any questions, um, you can always hit us up. You can, um, you can contact us. We're at Girl Scouts of Western Ohio. Um, and... I think that's it. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks.